Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. This is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, daily listening to the still small voice of God. Listen, I'm the founder of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement, as I said, and I didn't know if you know this, but we have a church in South Florida. It's in Fort Lauderdale. You can come. You are welcome. 1047 a.m. and 130 p.m. I'm there every Sunday waiting on you. I want to minister the word to you and the spirit. The prophetic atmosphere is off the charts. Come experience our worship. 1047 a.m., 130 p.m., two different messages, two different encounters. And I invite you to come over. If you can't come in person, watch that AM service online at www.ahop.online. There's no distance in the spirit. Of course, it's always better if you can be with us in person. I like to hug your neck and I like to speak with you face to face. But hey, I know many of you are in different parts of the world. You can't get here. Watch online. The revelation will travel to wherever you are. Amen. We also have churches in Birmingham, Alabama, Redford, England. Colinga, California. Amen. And I'm missing one somewhere. <laughs> God is growing the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Awakening Prayer Hubs is part of that. If you're a prayer hub leader, shout out right now. God is proliferating prayer hubs in the nations of the earth. Awakening Prayer Hubs is in a, a movement endorsed by Cindy Jacobs, Lou Engel, uh, Mike Bickle, James Gall, Patricia King, Alveda King, on and on and on. We're standing together for awakening in the nations. You can be part of the solution. You can be part of my intercessory prayer family, a network, a family, a tribe, a group, a company of true intercessory prayer leaders on one accord. I've never seen anything like it. We have so much, I have no word for it. We have so much unity is the best word I could describe, but maybe that is the best word in the Awakening uh, Prayer Hubs movement. We're pressing together and it's really becoming a deep seated family. Then there's Ignite, that's the prophetic family. Maybe you are not an intercessor, you should be, but maybe you're a prophetic person. Maybe that's your interest. Maybe that's where God has you. IgniteNow.org, IgniteNow.org. I wanna invite you to be part of that. Equipping a safe place to get your dreams and visions interpreted. Uh, the uh, prayer covering that you have there and all the rest is amazing. That new webpage is not up yet. I was gonna point you to it, but you can see the old one now. It's about to get updated in a major way. IgniteNow.org, IgniteNow.org. You are welcome to join that prophetic tribe. Now listen, today's devotion is from Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory. And I am sensing right now just a lot of background chatter and disturbances, and it's very distracting to my spirit. So I'm asking the intercessors who are with me to pray in the spirit, begin to break all that in the background, because every time I announce breakthrough, the enemy wants to come and distract you, cause different things to happen, and even in your household, in your mind, to get you off the same accord, the one accord. So intercessors, pray with me because we're about to go, and I know in part where we're going, and maybe you see the other part. So let's band together. You ready? Today's devotion is from Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory. And today's devotion is titled, listen, Disrupt the Disruptors. Ooh, disrupt the disruptors, disrupt the disruptors. And here's what I heard the Lord say. It's time to disrupt the disruptors. You've tolerated enemy disruptions long enough. Isn't this appropriate? You have to take a stand against harassing spirits. You have to bind hindering spirits. You've got to come against spirits that distract you from your calling and your purpose. You have to do this, says the Lord. I've given you the authority to bind and loose. I've given you dominion in the earth. I've given you the weapons of warfare, the armor of God in the name of Jesus. Don't stand by and watch as the enemy works his ministry in your life. Disrupt the disruptors. Oh, Jesus, he's saying disrupt. How appropriate. Disrupt the disruptors, those demon powers that come to steal, kill, and destroy. God has given a command today from headquarters, from the throne room, and he said, you disrupt them. Stop allowing them to disrupt you 
you become the disruptor. You become the disruptor of demonic plans. You become the disruptor of wicked satanic strategies. You go in as the disruptor. Flip the script. Change the roles. Amen. Today's scripture references Galatians 5, 7, 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, and Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Now the prayer starter and the decree from the devotional, Father, forgive me for tolerating the work of the enemy in my life. Strengthen me to stand against harassing spirits that hinder your plans for me in this season. I decree disruptions into the enemy's functions. I declare the enemy's ministry to my mind is shut down and I receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Father, we give you glory this morning. Yay. We give you glory this morning, God. We give you glory. <laughs> Lord, let your glory disrupt our lives. <laughs> Father, we thank you that you are the glorious warrior God. Let your glory disrupt your lives, oh God. We lift you up. You are high and lifted up. You are magnified over all, over all the divine distractions. We magnify you. We're not going to fall into the enemy's snare. We're not going to fall into demonic pits. We're not going to fall into the torrential traps, but we are going to fall into the love of God. We are going to fall uh, into the will of God. I just see that, Lord. Some of you, it seems as if you're going in circles. It seems as if nothing is, is going the way that you thought it would go. It seems like you're not making any progress. But the Lord would say to you today, as long as you seek my face, and as long as you ask me for wisdom, as long as you want my will, says the Lord, you will progress. You will go forward. You will make up for lost time, says the Lord, as long as you want what I want. No devil in hell can keep you from attaining my perfect outcome for your life, says the Lord. My perfect will, my perfect plans, my perfect purpose, says the Lord. So don't look at your current circumstances and be disgruntled or dismayed, says the Lord. Don't look around at what everything is that's going wrong and all the things that have been delayed, says the Lord, but keep looking to me, for I am the author of the faith that will take you through. I am the author of the faith that will cross you to the finish line. I am the author. I am the author. I am the author, says the Lord. I'll bring your story, and it's a story that will throw your heart. It's a story that I was pleased to pen, says the Lord. So don't look around at what's not happening. Don't look around at what you've lost. Don't look around at all the delays and the distractions because it only serves to discourage your heart, says the Lord. But look to me and ask me for my plans. Ask me for my purposes. Ask me for my wisdom. Ask me for my will. Keep asking me for what you need. For I will not withhold any good thing from you, says the Lord. It's my good pleasure even to give you the kingdom, says the Lord. So press in to where I am, for I am closer than you think. I am just beyond the veil. If you will open your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears, says the Lord, you will see what I'm doing in your life. You will see what the enemy is doing in your life, but you will see and understand that my plans and purposes cannot be thwarted, cannot be hindered, cannot be stalled. And even though right now it looks, says the Lord, it looks as if things have been stalled out. Things are, are, are puttering out. Things are just standing still. The Lord says, I am working it all together for you are good. And in the right moment, I will propel you, I will launch you, and you will make up for all the lost time because it was never lost. I was just using it. I was using it. The Lord says, I was using it. I was using the delays. I was using it. I was using those things. It wasn't my will for the enemy to come in, but I used it. I used it. I used it to root you deeper into my love. I used it to cause you to trust me more, to look to me instead of yourself. I used all of the enemy's evil, and I'm working it for your good, says the Lord. 
So hold on now because it won't be long before you will see my goodness in the land of the living. It won't be long now before you will see my goodness in your family, before you will see my goodness in your finances, before you will see my goodness in the areas of your life where the enemy came with a destructive agenda to steal, kill, and destroy. Hold on now, says the Lord. Tomorrow is brighter than yesterday. Come on, God is good. God, we praise you. We thank you. You are the one true living God. You are the God who works all things according to the counsel of your will. You've got a will. You've got a plan. You've got a purpose. And your purposes for our life will stand. Your word promises that they will. Your word says so. Your word says it. We're going to believe it. We're going to trust you. We're going to keep pressing. We're going to keep our hands to the plow. We're going to refuse to give up. We're going to refuse to give in. Flat out refuse. No way. We're not stopping. We're going to keep going. We're ready to run. We're pepped up. We're excited to walk in the will of the Lord. So Father, direct our steps today. Inspire our hearts to ask and keep on asking. Inspire our hearts to seek and keep on seeking. Inspire our hearts to knock and keep on knocking. God, give us an enduring spirit. Give us a persevering heart so that we can keep pressing through the obstacles. Keep pressing through the delays. Keep pressing through the stumbling blocks. Help us, Lord. Give us that 2020 vision that everybody's been prophesying about. Oh, so many of you haven't seen that in your life yet, have you? Oh, Jesus, we're asking for it. We're asking for the 2020 vision. We thought we knew where we were going, and then a virus came. We thought we knew where we were going, then social unrest raised up in a massive way. We thought we knew where we were going, and then elections went sideways. We thought we knew where we were going. Oh, but Jesus, you know where we're going. You know the way out. You know the way through. And we praise you for that. We thank you for that. Nothing surprises you. Nothing shocks you. Nothing dismays you. Nothing unthrones you. Nothing dethrones you. Come on now. Nothing dethrones you. Nothing dethrones you. Nothing dethrones you. Oh, Jesus, give us that awareness that you are still on the throne. <laughs> Come on, let's just settle here for a minute. Father, give us a revelation right now. Help us to understand, remember, acknowledge that you are still seated on the throne. You have not been dethroned. You have not been dethroned. You have not abdicated your throne. Come on. You have not abdicated your throne. You have not forfeited your sovereignty. Father, let this sink in. Let this sink in, not just in this moment, but let this revelation permeate our life. You have not been dethroned. You have not been, you are still seated on the throne. We are seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father who is seated on the throne. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, making an open show of them. He is seated next to the Father and we are seated in him. That means no one can dethrone God's purposes for your life. If God, listen, if God cannot be dethroned, his purposes cannot be dethroned. God has not abdicated his throne. God has not given up his sovereignty. He does not change. He is immutable. I-M-U-T-A-B-L-E. Immutable. Maybe there's two M's. But he's immutable. He is immutable. He does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was, he is, and he is to come. He is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. So, Father, help us to stay steady in the pursuit of your will. No matter what happens, no matter what has happened, no matter what we're afraid will happen, help us to stay steady in the pursuit of your will, not allowing all these other voices to sway us, to move us, to scare us, to intimidate us. All these other voices, conflicting opinions about what's going to happen in the next 12 months, what's going to happen in the next 12 years, what's going to happen in the next 12 days. All these conflicting voices in the earth, all these debating prophets, all these pontificating pastors, all these 
false media headlines all on both sides. Help us, Lord, to stop being double-minded. That's what's happening. You see it? We listen to so many different opinions, and it causes us, if we're not very careful, to be double-minded, to sway between two opinions. To sway between two opinions. We listen to this person preach, we agree with them. The other person preaches something different, and then we believe them, and they're preaching two different things. They're not even congruent with one another. We listen to this media channel, and they say one thing. We listen to the other media channel. They say something opposite, and we begin to, 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 to believe what we're listening to. You know why? Because faith comes by hearing. <laughs> That's why you can listen to the liberal media and begin to believe that if you listen to it long enough. You're indoctrinated by you listen to the conservative media, the ultra-conservative media. You can listen to, to a Calvinist preach, and you'll begin to believe the Calvinist doctrine if you listen to it long enough. You can believe, listen to a Baptist preach, and pretty soon you won't believe women should be doing anything in the church anymore. <laughs> you can listen to something long enough, and it renews your mind. Whether or not it's truth, it's still the principle that what you allow in your eye gates, in your ear gates, will influence your soul. So, Father, would you help us today to discern the truth and to stop giving our ear to things that lead us into double-mindedness. Stop giving our eyes to words, to pictures that lead us into double-mindedness. We cannot afford to be double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Lord, we can't afford to be unstable. We can't afford to be off-kilter. We can't afford to be swinging to and fro. Ephesians 4 says, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. James calls it double-mindedness. Father, help us, root us, ground us in your truth. So no matter what the prophets are saying, whatever the, the apostles are saying, no matter what the pastors are saying, no matter what the media is saying, no matter what our friends are saying, no matter what economists are saying, no matter what, no matter what, whoever is saying, that we know the truth so deeply that we will immediately reject anything that does not line up with your word. That we will stop listening to it, that we will extract ourselves from the conversation, that we will turn off the television, that we would stop reading that particular article. Some might say, eat the hay and spit out the sticks, or eat the fish and spit out the bones. No, we're not supposed to be eating things that are dangerous for us. I don't want truth with bones in it. I don't want a prophecy with bones in it. I don't want a sermon with bones in it. I don't want to have to spit anything out. So I'm not going to continue to sit and listen. I don't want media reports with bones in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You should either. Help us, Lord, to guard our eye gates and our ear gates. To stop allowing ourselves to be spoon-fed drivel. Prophetic drivel. Putting our hopes on things that you never said. Help us, Lord, to, 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 to discern the spirit of error so that we're not sitting under a pastor or under a YouTube video or under a Facebook Live where there's a person who operates in the spirit of error pontificating and that error is resting on our souls. Help us to discern. Help us to discern. Help us to discern. Show us, God. Help us to get so deep in your word and understand your ways to the degree that we immediately have a red flag, a check, a caution in our spirit that something is wrong. Help us to stop compromising what we know in order to be in the in crowd. Help us to stop compromising what we know to be truth just because we don't want to get persecuted. Help us, Lord, to stop agreeing with false prophets or immature or presumptuous prophets just because what they say aligns with what we want, even though God never said it. Well, this word's for somebody. People putting all these Facebook posts. Oh, this word's for who's it for? We think it's for us, but it was never for us. Now our hope deferred and our, our heart is sick. And help us, Lord. Give us discernment. 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 
Help us, Lord, to stop sharing things with other people that aren't true. Help us, Lord, to fact check, to truth check before we hit the share button, before we repeat what we've heard. Help us, Lord, to truth check, to fact check so that we're not propagators of lies. Unintentionally, unintentionally, but still perpetrators of lies. Help us, Lord, to press in to your truth. We're asking, God, we're asking. We know nothing, no one can separate us from your love and no one can snatch us out of your hand, but we can sure go down wrong paths if we're not discerning. We can sure choose wrong people and places and things if we don't know your will for our lives. We can sure make a mess. And although we're sure you'll get us out of the mess, God, we'd rather not make the mess. We'd rather not waste the time. We'd rather not suffer. We'd rather not go through that pain. We'd rather not miss your best will because we believe the lie or half truth, which is still a lie. Lord, we don't want to live in the gray areas. We want to live in the black and white called the word of God, the black, white, and red. The reds are the word in Jesus. Jesus, the words of Jesus. We don't want to live in the gray areas. We don't want to do whatever we think is right in our own eyes. We don't want to do what feels good in the moment. The truth is not relative. So help us, Lord, to begin to take a stand for truth. Instead of accidentally propagating lies because we didn't discern that what we read, what we heard, was not from your spirit, did not represent your heart, was not even your will in some cases. Father, we disrupt the disruptors. We disrupt the disruptors. We disrupt the disruptors and we thank you, we praise you. We honor you today. You are the truth. You are our only good. You are the way. Help us to follow your spirit. Your word says you'll lead us and guide us. Help us never to reject your leadership. Help us never to neglect your promptings. Help us never to continue to sit under something being said, written, spoken, shared that's not true. Because when we get that check and we ignore it, we endanger ourselves. We open the door to deception and we don't want to be deceived, God. So break any deception that may be in our souls. Break it off. Lord, break off that deception. Break it off. Break it off. God. Break it off. If we're believing a lie, break it off. If we're believing a lie, break it off. Replace every lie with your truth, God. Replace every lie with your truth, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord showed me something yesterday that I just love this. Isaiah 14, verse 7. The Bible says, The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. Other translations say, they break forth into shouts of joy. The people shout with a ringing cry. The people are celebrating with joyful songs. Everyone sings for joy. The inhabitants break into song. This is the secret weapon in your mouth. This is the secret weapon in your mouth. Sing until the breakthrough comes. Ruth Ward Heflin used to say, listen, Ruth Ward Heflin has gone on to be with the Lord. She used to say, praise until the worship comes. How do you praise? Oftentimes with singing, right? You can praise without singing. You can just speak forth words of praise to God. But she was speaking of the context of worship and of singing. She said, praise until the worship comes. So what are you doing? She's saying, sing, sing songs of praise until you break open the atmosphere and can enter into that deeper place with God. That's why we start off with high praise and worship services because it breaks open the atmosphere. This is what you need to do in your life. When you need breakthrough, go ahead and begin to praise. Go ahead and begin to change the atmosphere around you with songs of high praise. Get a a song, put it on YouTube, and just begin to sing it out. And if you don't know the words, just put it on and shout and dance and sing and say hallelujah. If you praise long enough, this is the secret weapon in your mouth. If you praise long enough, the worship will come. You'll break through. 
God's presence, listen, God's presence will flood into your prayer closet, your bedroom, wherever it is that you are spending time with God and worship. You will be drawn into such a deep, intimate worship. And if you keep worshiping, if you don't allow your phone to distract you, or people to distract you, if you keep worshiping, with Lord Heaven, you should say, worship till the glory comes. The glory will come. God will begin to encounter your heart. But how did it start? With a, with, a, with, a, with a song in your mouth. Praise till the worship comes. Worship till the glory comes. Then she would say, stand in the glory, if you can. And I added to it, I said, prophesy in the glory. When you get in the glory realms of God, there's no demon powers to distract you. When you get in the glory realms of God, your body can be healed. When you get in the glory realms of God, you get revelation, pours out from heaven, encounters, you're changed. You want to know the secret weapon in your mouth? Praise. Praise. Sing songs of deliverance over yourself. Psalm 101 1 and 2 says, it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Because you're like, I can't sing. To, to, to the God, it sounds like wind chimes. It sounds like glorious sound. It's just joyful noise. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Are you hearing me? Is there a song in your heart? Let the song come out of your mouth. Colossians 3.16 says, says, teaching and admonishing one another uh, in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Psalm 95 says, make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. This is the secret weapon in your mouth. Ephesians 5 says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Psalm 147 says, praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. James 5 says, is anybody suffering among you? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing a praise. You want breakthrough? You want to shift your atmosphere? You want to change your how you feel? Pray, sing, put let this song in your mouth. Psalm 104 says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. And guess what? The Lord will sing back over you. Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. Listen, he will exult over you with loud singing. And then you remember when Paul and Silas were in prison? In Acts 16, 25, the Bible says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. And all of a sudden the prison doors opened. It was breakthrough. So father, would you help us? Because scripture, I mean, there's scripture after scripture after scripture, dozens of scriptures that tell us to sing, to tell us how good it is, how smart it is, how wise it is to sing to the Lord. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of praise. We're going to sing. We're going to shout. We're going to use that secret weapon in our mouth to change and shift our atmospheres, not just in our own homes, but in our workplaces. Well, how can I sing in my workplace? I don't know. Sing in your head. I don't know. Change the atmosphere. You are the gate. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. You everlasting doors of the king of glory may come in. Sing. Praise. When you go to church on Sunday, I want you to remember this. I mean, I want you to sing. At Awakening House of Prayer on Sunday, Sunday, they were just singing their hearts out. My God. They were just singing their hearts out. Sometimes the Lord allows me to hear the amplification of the human voice in chorus with angels. Did you hear what I said? I said, sometimes the Lord allows me to hear the amplification of the human voice in chorus with angels. In other words, sometimes when I'm at Awakening House of Prayer, I hear the angels singing with us. And it's loud. When you're singing praises to God, you're attracting angelic assistance. You're attracting angelic cooperation. So we need to begin to sing praises to our God. When you go to church Sunday, I want you to sing with all your heart. Don't worry about if you've got a good voice or you don't have a good voice. This is the secret weapon in your mouth. Help create an atmosphere where God can not just touch you, but touch other people.
So, Father, we thank you today that you remind us of this reality. And this is scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture about singing your praises, about singing to you and how you sing over us. What a glorious, glorious God who would sing over his people songs of deliverance. How grateful we are and how we praise your holy name this morning. We are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. And we won't take that for granted. We won't allow the enemy to discourage our hearts. He cannot overturn your plans for our lives because we're not going to let him. You're certainly there to make sure he does it. All you need is our yes, so we say yes. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, isn't God good? Do you like that? The secret weapon in your mouth. Hallelujah. The secret weapon in your mouth. If you're in South Florida and you're a singer or a musician, I need you to come be part of what we're doing at Awakening House of Prayer. We have two corporate prayer services and two Sunday services. If you're a singer or a musician, I need you to come over and talk with me at Awakening House of Prayer. Let's get you plugged in. I need an army of worshipers. Amen. I want you to go over there to schoolofthespirit.tv and consider taking this class, Dream Wilder. While it's on early bird, it's there for you. I also want to tell you about a new class that's coming up in January. It's called Decoding 21 Mysteries of Heaven's War Room. Decoding 21 Mysteries of Heaven's War Room. Schoolofthespirit.tv slash mysteries. I'm going to add a dramatic, epic vision of Heaven's War Room. And when I studied out the vision, I discovered 21 mysteries of Heaven's War Room. If that piques your interest, go sign up for that. Amen. Go sign up for that if that's going to bless you. God is good all the time. Tons of stuff over there at schoolofthespirit.tv. Equip yourself. We're starting a new series uh, soon called Navigating the Will of God. God is good. Here's the ways to give real quick. If you want to sow into the ministry, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Cash app is dollar sign. I am Jennifer LeClaire. You can text the word pray to 754-701-2161. You can use the PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the, what am I missing? The P.O. Box. You want to mail something? P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. I love you guys. I'm done for the day. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.